there. I am Carol Crafty Grandma and today we are going to be doing the bench pillow for all seasons. It's a book that you can purchase on anniescatalog.com. Sorry, I've got stuff in here. Um, and it you do need to purchase it because it has all the templates in it. So in order to make this pillow you will need to have the templates. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And I cannot believe, but it's already time to make the November. Oops, with my hair. There it is. All right. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's already time to make the November pillow cover. I put the October one on my pillow over the weekend. And uh, so I'm all prepared for Halloween. And so now we're going to do the November for our Thanksgiving and fall activities. Um, the pillow it's the pillow cover has a turkey, a pumpkin, a couple leaves, a couple acorns, a bunch of different things on it. And I have a ton of small scraps of fall fabric. So we're going to use what we can out of this. Um, everything should be okay. I've looked through it and gone through what we need and I'm fairly confident that everything we need we can get out of the fabric I have here. Um, there's only one fabric here you've seen before. That's this one. And I think I have more of a step. There it is. Um, this one. And this one I used on the autumn quilt that we worked on where we played with half square triangles. So this one's going to get set aside to start with. If we don't need it, I'm not going to use it because I've already used it once on the, here, so we're good there. Um, these are all fat quarters, so that should be fun. Uh, there is one in here that has acorns on it, so that might be fun to play with for the acorns. I haven't decided yet. I, I'm going to look at that and determine as I go along how we're going. Um, these are squares. There's a brown one and a white one. And so they're decent sized squares, so we can get some decent sized stuff out of that. And I have the same two fabrics in like eight inch squares. So that might be something we find useful. And then the rest of this is all, our, oh no, I lied. What's in the middle here? Ah, Halloween fabric tried to sneak in here. Well, some of it's Halloween. That's Halloween. We used that in our Halloween, or in our October quilt. And it looks like these two, yep, these two are smaller pieces. They're the same fabric as that is. So that's all the same fabric. Those are all fat quarters. This is Halloween, so it goes away. So we won't be using Halloween fabric in our, or in our November topper. And then all of this are basically charm packs, five inch squares. And like I said, I did go through the templates and made sure that the five inch squares would work. Mm, turkey trot. There's a leaf, an acorn, an acorn cap. So those are the only three appliques that we'll, we have and they're all going to fit on a charm square. So I can use those without a problem. And then, of course, the fall leaves, we can use squares. One of the things that I'm not certain about is the orange pumpkin. Not certain. I've got, I do have some, that's a leaf. I don't have anything. This has got a pumpkin on it, and this has got pumpkin on it. But they're not orange. So here, look here. There we go. Let me do that. 
So these two have pumpkins on them, but neither of them are orange. And on the picture, we have an orange pumpkin with a couple of leaves on it. So I'm thinking we could probably use this. This is kind of orangish, but I mean it is, it does have orange in it. It's just not a bright orange like a pumpkin normally would be. I'm thinking this is the one we're going to use for the pumpkin though, because that is a fat quarter and there's plenty of it there. Okay. Let's see here. Where are we at? There we are. So let's get started. We need cream dot and the cream dot fabric we needed an eighth of a yard so again fat quarters will work just fine in dnd for that and the cream dot from what i can see from the picture because remember we're never you at home are never going to have the exact same fabric they have um you can Go out to anniescatalog.com, and you may be able to find the majority of them, but you're probably not going to find all of them. So you need to be able to adjust what you're making to reflect what they have without being matchy-matchy. Um, what was the one fabric that I didn't know about? There was a green. Um, batting front. Where's the one that says border? Orange plaid. Why doesn't it say? All right, is it over here? In the cut list? Yes. Green fall print. So it calls for a quarter of a yard of a green fall print. And the largest we have is a fat quarter. We don't have an actual quarter of a yard. We only have a half of a quarter of a yard. That's what a fat quarter is. Um, so I don't know what we're going to do for the border. We may need to, since we do have this that we used before, I think we have enough of this. Oh uh, yeah, we've got plenty of this. So we may end up using this because it's, it's plenty of fabric. Because I don't think I have any. Let me verify. Looking in green, no, no. Oh, what is this? Nope, we're going to need to go here. This has leaves on it, and it is green. I recently went shopping in my favorite shopping store, which is my mother's fabric stash, and I, this, that's where this came from. And so I didn't realize that I had it. This will probably be our border. There we go. Okay, uh, I also have my heat and bond, which if you watched October, you found that I fell in love with this stuff. It does not gump up my needle. It goes on very nicely, and I really, really like it, and it's cheaper than Steema Seam 2. So this is my new favorite stuff for applique, heat and bond. And 5.25 yards, I want to say I paid about $11 for it. That even, might even be high might have been more like eight. Anyway, it was cheaper than um, the Steema Seam 2. Excuse me, check on something. Kitty cat's making noise. Be right back.
Alright, sorry about that. I also noticed while I was out there that Facebook isn't working. It says that I need to reload because I'm not connected to Facebook. So, I'm hoping you're all watching on YouTube or watching later on because at this point in time it looks like Facebook isn't working. Let me close my cabinet. I forgot to do that. It's going to drive me crazy during the whole show. But I don't do it now. There we go. Clip. There we are. Got my cabinet closed. There we go. Alrighty. Let's try this again. It's taking me 10 minutes just to get started. I'm just having a day today, aren't I? Alright. So the first thing I need is a cream dot. And that goes behind the turkey. And then there's another cream. There's some other creams that go behind the pumpkin. I am going to use, this fabric has words on it. And you know what? Let's do this. That goes there. I go there. Let's put that over there because you really don't need to see that. And hold on. There we go. So this fabric has words on it. Hearth and home, Thanksgiving. So it's all that good stuff for fall. So I think I'm going to use that behind the pumpkin. And then this, which is a nice cream color, I'm going to use behind the turkey. Let's see here. The turkey gets, oh, he gets a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Let's organize here. Rearrange a little bit. So C is on the turkey. They put all these nice letters here, this way. There we go. And naturally, I put myself in the wrong spot. There we go. They put all these nice letters on here so that when you cut out your pieces, you know where to put everything. So let's make sure all of the, the letters that are in the turkey are the ones that we're cutting out of the fabric for behind the turkey. So C, B, and F, C, B, F, yes, G, J, and K, G, J, and K, yes, L, N, O, P, L, N, O, P. Excellent. So those are all going to go behind the turkey. They're actually kind of small, so I'm I, I think that using this is a good idea. Because if we use the words, we wouldn't get all the words in our pieces. So that's, that's a good thing. Okay. So let's do that. Let's get these cut. you a little further out. That way you get the full view. Excellent. I started late on my coffee today, so I still have some left. All right. What do we need? What is the widest thing we need? Well, I think we should probably iron this first. There we go. We've got an awful lot of wrinkles in our fat quarter, so let's get it ironed first.
There we go. A little water, a little heat. Of course, we don't have heat yet. If you've watched me before, you know that my iron doesn't or just turns off so that it's not hot while it's sitting up. So basically what I'm doing right now is running a cold iron over some fabric. See, I can hold my hand here. I mean, it's a nice safety feature. It's just annoying. All right, so while that's warming up, um, from the other, let's see, we need Z. Oh, excuse me. Where is Z going? Z is going behind the acorns. And it is going to be four and a half inches square. So five inch charm pack or five inch charm squares, they will work. Three, four and a half inch squares that'll go behind the acorns. They're supposed to be light colored. Let's see. Doesn't look like I have a ton of light colored fabric. Oh, there's some. Everything's definitely fall colored here. All right, so this is the extent of my light colored fabric. And you can't see it because I don't have that camera on. So these two, um, I need three squares because there's going to be three acorns. I'm going to go with the turkey all the way around. Okay, so that's that first one. Then T, what's T going to be? Uh, Where's T at? T goes around the pumpkin. So T is going to be out of this. T, S, and P. T, S, and P. All going to be out of that. Excellent. C. All right, where's C going to go? Oh, there it is. C is part of the leaves. And so we're going to use that for C. B. And B is going to be out of the same stuff. And hopefully I have enough. Let's see. Probably not. Three, three each, three inch squares, so I can get those out of there. Nope, total is six, so I only have four. All right, then I need, this is kind of a light color, and this will work with the leaves. And that will and we'll throw that in there just because if we need it, we'll get we need it. Gold prints and tonal squares. Tonals. A. Where's A going? A is going on the turkey. So gold on the turkey. That'll work. M also goes on the turkey. Also goes on the turkey, so that'll work from that. Q also goes on the turkey. Yep, turkey's legs. All right. So the wings, the beak, and the legs are all going to come from that. W. Where's W go? Mm, 
Let's see. W, 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 W. Does it say? No, it does not. It's probably on the leaf. There it is. All right, W is a brownish from the leaf. So we'll go there. And V is probably also going to be on the leaf. It is, it is the stem of the leaf. So we'll probably go that route. Okay. Should be warm by now. There we go. Get rid of the folds. Good thing we don't have a kitty cat around. She'd be running. Running away! I don't know where she's at. It was the smaller one that was making noise a little while ago. Which is, is normal for the small one, because that's what she does. She runs around, she makes noise. Move all those up so I know where they're at. And move you down there so you can see what I'm doing. I don't need my heat and bond right now, so I'll put it over there. All right. Fabric is fraying pretty fast, but we'll get that straightened out. Two three inch squares. All right. Well, dang, that's not going to work. Now remember, because we have fat quarters, we're not going to be able to go with the grain of the fabric or test the grain of the fabric because we'll just lose too much too much of this fat quarter when we need it. So. Fold it over. We're going to trim it off just to make sure it's actually straight. Looks straight, but looks can be deceiving. Throw the little piece away. Over we go. You're not far enough up. There we go. Zoom. There we are. All right. Three inches. two three-inch squares.
moved over. I'm going to put my fabric, yeah, you can see my thumb. I'm going to put my letters over here, so A, B, C. B is two and a half inch squares. So now I'm just going to take this and cut it to two and a half. Well, let's see, what's the next one? The next one's one and a half. Oh, but I do have three two and a half inch rectangles. I'm not going to get enough out of here. So, okay, we'll go with two and a half. There's one. There's two. And then let's make them two and a half inch squares instead of two and a half by three. Excellent. So that's letter B. Now the next thing I need is one one and a half inch square. You know what, I'm going to get a smaller ruler. If we're going to be these tiny little squares, let's... Let's get our tiny little rulers. As I've said multiple times, you always want to try to use the smallest ruler you can, so... And this one has these lovely little eighth inch marks on it all the way around. Oh. That's two and a half. I want one and a half. At least I was going to cut it bigger instead of smaller. Usually I do it too small. And how many of these do I need? I only need one. Doesn't that figure? I'm going to get two. Okay. And this is F. F. A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm going to run out of room over here on the side, but we're going to go with it for the time being. All right. Three. Two and a half inch by four and a half inch. How wide is that? That's nowhere near. That's not good enough. All right. I'm going to set the little pieces off to the side. We may still need them. Have to use the wider ruler or longer ruler now because we're going to go to two and a half. I just don't know what to do with it. There, that'll work. All right, you move up there. Squared up. And it's two and a half, and I need four and a half inches long. What letter is this? G. F. G. One two inch by two and a half inch rectangle. Excellent. Oh, what's this one? Is that two and a half? That is two and a half. Excellent. 
So it's two and a half that way. Oh, I skipped one, but okay. Um, two inches by two and a half, yes. So this is one, two and a half by two. Excellent. And I only need one of these. Yes, and it's K. G H I J K. All right, I skipped over J. I need two one inch squares. This is one and a half inches by one and a half. I know it is because I cut it earlier. So let's make it one inch by one inch. Now, if that didn't come out right, let's try this again, make sure it's square. It's just a little off. There we go. Let's get rid of that. And this is J. Correct? Yes. G H I J K. Yes. And I need another one inch by one inch square. Because I needed two of them. Yes, I did. Okay, what's that? And then now I need one that is three and a half inches. Is that three and a half inches by any chance? One, two, that's just three inches. Well, fudge. All right. Um, I need a bunch of one and a half inch wide strips. All right, so let's get those out of here. One and a half inches. One and a half by three and a half. half by six and a half. M. Um, I'm going to move it over to the sewing machine. N. That was L, right? That was L. So M. Oh, one and a half by seven and a half. Not going to make it. No, not going to make it. But I do need one that's one and a half by two and a half. That I can get out of here. And yes, I will be moving all of these back to the table at some point to get them in the correct order. But for right now, all right, so the only thing left is O. And 
it is also one and a half inches wide. And it is going to be seven inches, no, seven and a half inches long. Right, square it up. And that is all I need out of this fabric. These I'm going to put over by the machine to use for starter fabric later. This is enough fabric it can get thrown somewhere for later use. And we'll just put it right there for now. All right, so now from we need three four and a half inch squares for Z. And Z was going on the leaves, correct? Correct. Uh, no. No. Where was Z going? I know I found. Oh, it's going on. That's right. It's going on the uh, acorns. And I decided to make it out of this. There we go. And I am cutting all three of these at a time. And that's why I'm squaring this up. Just because I want to make sure that I have all three exactly the same size. four and a half inch squares. Ruler. Four and a half inches square. Now, most of this fabric will not be seen because the acorn applique will be covering it up. But it's still kind of cute fabric. Like I said, it's going to have acorns covering it up, but I think that'll be fine. And this is Z, yes. O P Q R S T U V. Eh. W, X, Y, Z. There we go. We'll do that. I've got fabric everywhere. All right, T. Four two inch squares of the same fabric. Oops. Well, we'll use this. That doesn't make any sense. Why would T, I'm thinking it just needs to be the same fabric as itself. Because T, S, and P, ah, all right. T 
TS and P are all going to be this fabric because they, TS and P are all going behind the or surrounding the pumpkin. I see what they mean. The, the three squares that I just cut out to go behind the acorns were supposed to be three different fabrics and I didn't do that. I made them all three the same fabric. It wanted different fabrics. Oh well. We're going to be with go with what we have. And let's see. What do we need from this? Two four and a half by four inch squares. Let's do those first. Where's there's my where's that? Oh, I have to iron. Hold on. There we go. The end of this fabric is all folded over. Otherwise, I would have just gone with making the end pretty and being done with it. But because we don't need a ton of it. Now, T is going to get cut in half. Four, two inch. Oh, maybe it just folds over. Ah, it's going to be folded over. Now I get it. Now here's going to be a trick. I want the words to be upright or there to be no words. And there's words everywhere, so I don't think the no word part is going to work. All right. Shift. All right. Um, fold that way. Trim this square. And now, how wide do I need this to be? I need this to be four inches wide. Yes, four inches wide, which is ironically just the right width for my ruler, so that's a good thing. No double rulers required, just one. Fabric decided to slip. I hate it when that happens. All right, there we go. Make sure it's square on the fold. There we go. So now, square up the end. You can't see what I'm doing because I forgot to do that. There we go. Square up the end. Let's try that again. There we go. And this way. And so it is four inches that way. And I need four and a half the other way. That's 
one. That's two. And what letter is this? This is S. P Q R S. And T. No, let's not do that one first. We need P first. One and a half by two and a half. So one and a half by two and a half. And this is P. I have a P. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Now we have two P's. Excellent. Why do we have two P's? I don't know. There are two. I don't know if they've messed up or if that's just one's in the turkey and one's in the pumpkin. All right, well, we'll go with it. And then we need four two inch squares. Excellent. Four two inch squares. And that is T. P Q R S T. And then we don't need this anymore. I'll put this over here. Now the next part is C squares, and they go on, yes, the leaves. We need a total of C and A. Oh, not all of them get to dashed. Okay, so C, three C squares and they need to be lighter colored. And we're going to go with these. And what size do I need? Three three-inch squares. Trim off a little bit, square it up. That didn't work out well. Let's try that again.
There we go. Fabric moved on me. Let's see. Squared up. Now have a square, squared corner, and we need them to be three inches. I know, I keep looking at the book, but I just don't want to get them wrong, because I'm going to have a whole lot of pieces here. I need them or not, so we'll go that way. And then we'll do this one. Okay, three three inch squares. Oh, from two prints. <laughs> So we've got three, and this is C, A, B, C. And then I was going to do the other color here. Six total. Go. We're going to trim it up. Go to three. And three. And that is also C. Excellent. And then one from two prints. So a two and a half inch square to match the C squares. Ooh, do I have enough? That's only two. What do I need? Two two and a half inch squares from each of the, oh, actually I do. Ironically enough, I have one of each of these left. All right, so. All right, that seems to be okay. So I'm just gonna cut these two and a half. Yep, they're squared. Excellent, all right. Two and a half. Oh, that's amazing. They actually cut them straight. Excellent. Two, two and a half to match the C's. All right, we're good there. Done with that. Now, the gold. Getting into the gold. Three three inch squares for A. And uh, where did A go? A was on the leaf. So, and they're what, how big? Three inch, and these are five inch squares. So I do need three pieces. Other 
fabric just in case. Alright, square this up because these aren't square like the last ones were. That's sad, but hey. squares. Okay, and these go in the A spot. And one one inch square for M. Let's just see where does M go? Oh, that's right. M is A is in the turkey, M and Q. A, M and Q. All right. So we're going to use this same color or same fabric. M is one inch by one inch. Is that straight by any minor miracle? It's straight enough, excellent. One inch. Square. Let's see here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M. There's only one of them, correct? That is correct. Now, two, one inch by two and a half inches. So it's already one inch. Two and a half. I need another one. It looks squared off, but it's not. Ah, but that side is. All right. Actually, I'm going to use those two. And this is Q. M N O P Q. All right, and this is, I think, where we stopped. Well, no, maybe not. W. W was a darker color. It is where we stopped. W is a darker color for the leaf. So let's go with... Oh, that's kind of a greenish. It's got a pumpkin on it, though. I don't know if I like that. There we go. What do I need? How many W's do I need? Three two and a half inch squares. Are you squared up over there? Yes. Oh, that's good. Two and a half. Now I should be able to do this because they were five inch squares. and a half. Is that one? 
let's see, two and a half. Mm, don't move. Silly ruler. Okay. That goes there. You go over there. And this. W. That's Z, right? Yes. W, X, Y, Z, W. All right, and then V. Where does V go? V is the leaf, or is the stem on the leaves. Do I need two of them? No, I only need one. Oh, this is just one leaf. We still have to do all the same stuff for the other leaf. All right. Um, v. I think we're going to go with the same stuff. That is one inch by four and a half. No, we're not. All right. A leaf stem. Here we go. Okay, one and a half by four and a half. All right, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V. And now we're going to make, oh, no, not yet. H, where does H go? All right, so I'm going to guess, based on the fact that I'm not seeing, I think they messed up gold. Yes, they did. So now I need reds, basically the same idea. No, these are, these are different. All right, that says reds. So we're going to go with reds. Let's find reds. That's red. Same red. Let's think about that one. Green, black, green. That's a red. More red than that other one, actually. Blue, brown, black, green. 
same red. Kind of a red. There's still more brown than red, but let's see. Okay, so I've got those. We'll use those. Let's see. First one we need is a one and a half inch square. Then we need two three inch squares. Let's see if I can get that all out of here. Let's trim it just a bit. And then trim it just a bit. Two three inch squares, we need two three inch squares. So let's do three inches. Set that aside because I'm going to use that in just a minute. And three inches this way. And this is A. That goes up there. One and a half inch square. And how many do I need? I need one. That's two and a half inch. No, that's, we know this. One inch by four and a half. I can get one inch by four and a half inches out of here, and I only need one of them. One inch by four and a half inches. That's a V, so that goes over here with this one. Why are they not the same? Did I do something wrong? I did. The gold is too wide. Did I do it one and a half? I did, it's only supposed to be one. the V. And a one and a half inch square. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. One and a half inch square. One, one and a half squares. Two, three inch squares. One, so I need three, two and a half inch squares. And that goes with W. So that goes on the leaf. You go over there. Let's get you out of, yeah, we're going to use this. Three two and a half inch W squares. Hmm. 
Okay, not cut the same, so here, trimming up we go. Do that. Turn it around. Two, and it says two and a half inch squares, right? Yep, two and a half inch squares. Don't need to square it up to the top or the bottom because they're not square. Here we go. W goes over there. All right, now we need to move on to the browns. All right, I don't want coffee. Where's my water? There's my water. <sighs> okay. Brown. One four and a half inch D. Where is that going? That's going in the middle of the turkey. So I think it's supposed to be brown, but I think I'm going to use black. Because that's got a big old turkey right in the middle of it. And I could fussy cut around that. And that'll look cool. So let's do that. And it is a four and a half inch square. It is. So fussy cut. See that? See that turkey right there? I want that turkey in the middle. Or as well as I can get it. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm actually going to cut it around three of the sides. I'm not just going to a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm going to make sure that that turkey stands out. That's what fussy cutting is. I want that turkey as close to the middle of my square as I can get it. There we go. A, B, C, D. And an E rectangle. All right, where's E going? E's going to go this right alongside of that, so I know I have another piece of that. I just know I do. Yep, there it is. And. How, what's this size going to be? One and a half inches by four and a half inches. Hmm. That's going to be there. I'm just going to wing it. I'm not going to fussy cut this one. I'm just going to go with it where it fits. One and a half. Square it up. And four and a half. D, this is E. I. I and you. Let's see. Neither of them go there. So where do they go? Oh, U is the pumpkin stem. And I is the bird's head. All right.
eye is the bird's head? Yes. So a two inch by two and a half inch. We're going to use the same fabric. That was E, E, F, G, H, I. All right, a couple of those. There we go. And then the U is the stem of the pumpkin. I'm not going to use brown. No, I'm not going to use this. Um, stem of the pumpkin. Let's see. Oh, golly. What do I want to use for this? There we go. No, no, no. I passed that once. Um, all right. Um, I guess I will go with this. And one and a half by two and a half. QRSTUV. U. There we go. Whew. A lot of cutting. A lot of small cutting. This is where a scrap bucket comes in handy because you can get a whole lot of different colors if you've got little buckets in each of your bins for your colors. All right. Orange tonal. So this is our actual pumpkin. And what did I decide I was going to? I decided I was going to use this for the pumpkin. And this one needs to be a three inch square. Really? It's a tiny pumpkin. really thought that pumpkin was bigger than three inches, but apparently I was wrong. And this will go on A. 
And then the green fall print, which is the leaves, we'll do that later. Okay, now we've moved on. We need one, two, three leaves. Three, four, five, five leaves? One, two, three, four, five, yes, five leaves. So we don't need the rotary cutter or the rulers right now. I am not putting them away this time because we will need them. I know we will need them because we have to square things up. So I'm only going to put them over here. They're not going far. I don't have all the letters cut that I can see. So let's see, let's make sure. Okay. And since we don't need this, we're going to set this over here. Okay. I'm going to make the leaves out of those. A. What is A? B is two and a half, so that makes sense. B. C are three inch squares. D. What is D? D is four and a half, that's that one, that's the turkey. Yeah, the pumpkin is way bigger than the turkey. Something's not right here. Where is the turkey? R. The turkey is R. Ah, turkey's over here. Eight and a half inch. There we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. No, that's not K. Unless I cut it wrong. Could have cut it wrong. One, two, three. Now this is L. M. R, R, eight and a half inch squares. Yes, all right. Oh. 
up the roller. Iron it. Too many wrinkles. Fold it up a little bit. There we go. Q R S. What are S's? S's are four by four and a half. S T. T. U is that stem V ear are the two stems for the leaves W W there's a W there somewhere two three two and a half inch squares W So that's over there. So behind the leaves, it wants green. So we're going to go with that. Those are trees. That works. X. And then below the turkey, below the turkey. Blow the turkey. Y and Z. Okay. Now we've got them all. Excellent. Now we have all of the pieces that we need. Those two aren't cut out yet, but we're getting there. No, I'm going to need a button. Wasn't paying attention to the button. All right, let's see here. Got them all in order. I need this cutting board. Where do I put them? Can't put them on the ironing board because that would be stupid because I'm going to need to use the iron. All right, move this over here. Heat and bond we can put over here for now because we're getting ready to use it anyway. All of the extra fabric that I've just been tossing up here can go over here. The green border. I'm going to put that where I will forget where I put it, under the iron. I'll leave it hang out a little bit. Hopefully that means I'll remember where I put it. This stuff is all going to get used in a moment. All right, there we go. A, B, C, D. I don't know where that's going to go. 
what that's going to get attached to. Because it gets folded down. I have no idea. Oh, that's the turkey. E. F. G. H. I. J. K. L. M. N. O. P. Nope, that's not right. Q. I'm missing a letter. Because so that's R. S. T U V W X Y and Z. I'm missing a letter. You didn't know it was going to be Alphabet Day today here today. It's Alphabet Day. Let's sing our alphabet song. Okay, what did this need to be? This is six and a half by twelve and a half. So I knew there were a bunch of pieces to this, and I should have thought to make the letter pieces before we started. Because it does make life so much easier when you have them printed. All right. So now we go here. Turn this down. Hey, kitty can't make a drive by. She left. All right. And line it up. I know. I don't normally use my cutting board as my ruler, but it's just working for today. Six and a half. Oh, now my trees are going to be lopsided on my on their side. That's not going to work because it goes on the bottom that way, right? Yeah. Oh no. No, no, no. This goes up and down. We're good. Had myself scared there for a minute. This is going to go with three leaves over the top of it. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. Okay, let's try this again.
Nope. Ruler moved. This is X. All right, now this is where the turkey's going to be standing. He's going to be standing on corn. So we need to make sure that it's facing this direction so he's standing on the corn because if I have it going this way it's going to look weird. So this way, this needs to be how wide? Ten and a half inches wide. Let's make sure that that's where he's going. Yes. So ten and a half inches wide. It's only going to be three inches or so tall, so I don't really need to worry about it that much. I just want to make sure that it's looking the right direction. By ten and a half. And it's only three and a half inches tall. Okay. So what slices of corn do I like best? I guess it really doesn't matter. I kind of like them all. No, I was right the first time. Trim it off. Square it up. Three and a half inches wide. And this is why. Then we need three leaves that are going to go on top of these trees. So let's look. Those don't make good leaves. I don't think those would make good leaves. Those are leaves. That's not a bad idea. Pumpkin wouldn't be bad. Eh, too much orange. Blue wouldn't work. Because blue's not a, a leaf color. 
black's not a leaf color. That's not bad. That might work. That's too blue. That's black. That's got more orange in it again. I guess we could do brown. The truck might work. It's a different green. I kind of like that. Black is no good. That might work. Okay. So I need three leaves in three distinctly different colors. We're going to skip that one. That was a nice idea to begin with, but no. I think this one and this one would be good. That's too blue. It's a green blue, but it's, I think it's still too blue. So we're going to have to go with that one. So those are the three leaves I need for this. And then I need two leaves to go on top of the pumpkin, which is this. And it calls for actual green. No, I don't like any of those. And do we have anything other than the... F yes, we do. All right, this might actually work. A pumpkin, but green. And a turkey, but green. All right, I like that. That works. Now let's see here. It says orange, gold, and red. Eh, I don't really have a red. I looked for a red before. I have that red. I guess I could use that instead. Okay, now we need this and this. We don't have a gold, right? No, no, we don't. I'm going to go with this. I like that. That works. Now, where are my templates? There they are. Leaf. I need one as is and two reversed. Now we're going to have to see if I can do the reversed portion of it without getting out of camera view. I don't think I can, but we'll have to see. So the first leaf it says is as is shown on the template. The next two that go on to the tree fabric are supposed to be reversed. And without a light box, which is typically how you see things in reverse, I use my window, typically. But to do that, I have to step away from the camera 
So let's see, this one, will, I'm going to label it red. No, orange. That way I know where it goes on the picture. Now, gold. Let's see, can I see through this paper with it down there? I cannot, all right, so here we go. We cut this off, stay. almost put that way too close to the iron. And I am going to take my template. There we go. My template. See how it has the lines on it on the side that you can see? I'm going to put that against my window. And then I'm going to draw two leaves in reverse. And I'll show them to you when I get back over here. So I have to pass this camera, excuse me, sorry, here we go. Ooh, I got way too much stuff over here. Let's see here. Well, at least there's no kitty cat. That's a step in the right direction. Here we go. Let's get the mannequin out of the way. Sorry. I don't think you even saw that. There you go, you just saw me moving. All right, where's my leaf? There's my leaf. Okay, leaf is up against the window. I am now drawing the leaf. And this is not the easiest thing to do because I've got bins in front of me where the kitty cats sleep. All right, I have, oops, leaf one done. And now do it a second time. These are not very pretty. They are. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's go through. Excuse me. Watch the camera. Sorry. Here we go. Okay. And then let's see, one is gold and one is red. Gold, red, and here we go. So look at the orange one. See how the leaf goes up and the finger top of the leaf goes off to the side? Gold, same thing, but the leaf goes off in the other direction. That's what it means by reversed. Reversed, mirrored, whatever term you want to use, that's what we did. And like I said, I don't have a light box, so I use my window. It's always worked just fine for me. Didn't think about it when it comes to, I mean, I've done this before on other videos gone around this way. I've got more stuff over here now, so it's kind of more of a challenge. Um, but that's what we did. That's what I did. Now, assorted green tonals. Two different fabric leaves, assorted tan tonals. What the heck? I only saw five leaves. Oh, 
Yes, two different. Now, so I, now I need two regular direction. That they're both going the same direction, I hope. Yes, the green ones are both going the same direction. So I can just do it here. It's also much easier to draw on a table than it is on a window. So. Now, the steam is seam two, I told you, if you were so inclined, you could print on it. So you could scan in these leaves and then print them out onto the steam of seam two. So if you are particular and you need things to be exact, that would be a way to do that. You can just scan these in, the picture in, and then duplicate it as many times as you want in like Microsoft Word or any text, well, any picture editor, I guess. Um, you can duplicate it. So it can be pulled in as a JPEG or any type of thing like that. Um, and then print them out on the Steam Seam 2. This you can't. This has no second side to it. The, the second side is the sticky side. There's no second piece of paper covering it up, so you cannot print on this. Um, but that is an advantage of the Steam Seam 2 is you can print if you're so inclined. Okay. So we have our those leaves and we have these leaves. Excellent. Now we need acorns. What do we want to use for our acorns? So I want to use the acorn fabric. My question is, do I want to use the acorn fabric as the top? I think I do. I think I want to do it as the top but I don't have any lighter colored browns to use as the bottom. So I think this needs to be the top and these need to be the bottom. And actually this means you'll get to see more of the acorn because of the fact that it's a bigger section. So the acorn is that part and I need three of these. way. Get it stuck in there. There we go. And the other thing with this heat and bond, you cannot use a Frixon pen to draw the styles on. Well, I guess you can't do it with any of these because you're going to be sticking it onto the fabric. 
with the iron, which means if you were to use, instead of using a pencil like I'm using, if you were to use a Frixon, you would end up without anything to cut around. <laughs> All right, now the acorn caps. I need three of these. And three. There we go. Almost cut too close to the line. That wouldn't have been good. There. We go. All right. Let's get this tightened back up. And put back in the baggie. On the shelf where it belongs so I don't forget where it's at. Excellent. Beautiful. Fold up the appliques. Applique templates, I should say. Go out to here. All right. So first is our acorn tops. So we take the back of the fabric and our heat and bond. We go to the iron and we press it on with heat. <laughs> Not enough. You have to leave it pr sitting so that it actually adheres. No, I'm not pushing down with my hand. I just don't know what else to do with it. Sometimes I stand like this, but it's just some place to rest my hand. This is going to be a long one. October took three parts to get the October one done. This one might take three also. Not because it's, well, it's because it's got a lot of pieces. It's, it's definitely much more complicated than most of the rest of them that we've done. Alright, now let's cut this out around here. Hold you back up like a nice fat quarter. Back over here in the stack of fall stuff. I got a lot of fall fabric, a lot of fall fabric, and I don't have that much more fall to do.
Okay, next one. Acorn fabric. Right side down, wrong side up. Heat and bond. And we press. I shouldn't say press. We're not really pressing. We're just heating. It's gotten very busy out here. I don't know what's up with all these people. It's not come home from work time. I saw one school bus so far. Only one. Yeah, so now I've got to figure out what to do with all this extra fall fabric. I'm going to have to put it somewhere. It's all basically browns. So I don't know if I should sort it by color scheme and put the squares over there. Or I'm not certain what I'll do with it all. But I definitely will not need to buy any next year. That being said, I really don't have any red, which we mentioned earlier. So maybe I will. So now that we're using these smaller little pieces, and we're using lots of this, here is something you have to be careful of, is you must trim these down to fit on the fabric. Because if you have any of this heat and bond that's over the fabric you're adhering to, it will stick to your ironing board, and you don't want that to happen. Trimming it down so that it fits onto the square. Because the leaf itself fits on the square without a problem. It's just a matter of making sure that you don't have the heat and bond sticking out over the, the not that quarter, <laughs> uh, charm square. One leaf. Mm -hmm. All right, and these leaves hang, the green ones hang down. This fabric has a direction to it. So I want to make sure that the direction of the fabric and the direction of the leaf are somewhat close. So I don't have an upside down turkey or pumpkin pie. Seeing a pumpkin pie hanging upside down would just look weird. So if you do have fabric that has a direction to it, look at the direction the leaf is going to be hanging or, or whatever applique you're putting on. Um, look at the direction the applique is going to be doing to make sure that you don't have upside down items. Okay, so those are my two green. Did I take any? Yeah. My pumpkins. Eh, the pumpkins face in multiple directions. 
because it's one of those do as I say, not as I do things. Why is someone pulling into our driveway? I think they are not pulling into our driveway. They are trying to turn around. Because it would be so difficult to just drive around the block. Oh, and there's a school bus here now that's got to wait. I don't understand. In this day and age, especially with GPS and everything else, it corrects you and it says, recalculating, rerouting, whatever it is that, for depending on which one you're using. And her three-point turn was like a five-point turn, so it was funny to watch. There, let's see, orange. Let's, in what order they do they hang in? Gold, orange, red on the bottom. So if that one's on the bottom, I want this one in the middle. Orange is the one in the middle. And again, I run into this has direction to it. And these hang down. No, they all hang down. So I want to make sure that I kind of put this on here so that it's hanging down. And this may mean that in the picture, it's got them hanging straight up and down. I may angle them a little bit just so that the item on the fabric doesn't look out of place. Any direction I want. Last one. I got more than one piece of fabric. Okay, let's trim it down. And again. Directional fabric, don't want the pumpkin to be looking like it's hanging upside down, so we make sure that the fabric and the pat and the applique are facing in a similar direction. And in this case, I tried to put the pumpkin in a, towards the middle of the leaf. Thought I was losing my microphone there for a minute. All right. I'm pulling out my bench.
get myself centered on this thing. <laughs> there we go. Yes, stick. Okay, so now I need to cut these out of the thing. Of the, here. There we go. So now I need to cut around the lines. This must have been one of them I did at the window because it's got a little zigzag in the, you know, here. There we go. So, see how I kind of drew it funny? Because it was challenging to work at the window. usually cut to the inside point like that and then go back out and cut in and clip to the point that way I don't have to like turn around in the point in, in inside there I've never been good at it at doing that I just do it this way. I also try and keep the line to my left because I am right-handed. And that being said, I do this here, going this direction with the line where I want it. And then I go around here with the line on the other side. <laughs> Now keep in mind that this is going to be stuck to another piece of fabric. So if you're not perfect, if you cut a little bit further in, it's not going to be a major deal. Don't go too far in. But if you accidentally cut in a little, clip in a little bit, past where you intended to cut, it's not going to be a major deal because you are going to be adhering this to another piece of fabric at some point in time. Come on. There we go. Got a little bit of a string that wanted to come out. One little thread wanted to stay attached. I took care of that. All right. And now the very bottom of this has a little circular bottom to it. I'm going to try and cut it out that way. So I cut it out so it's a little, it's not pointed at the bottom. It's kind of curved. It's never going to end up that way because of the fact that the um, sewing machine, when I do the applique, is not going to come out quite right. So the leaf hangs this way. So you, now you can see the pumpkin. If I hang the leaf, nope, that, this way. If I hang the leaf this way, straight up and down, the pumpkin's going to sit a little wonky. So if I do it, if the leaf sits this way a little bit, or a little bit more, it'll, the pumpkin will look right. If I had, wasn't paying attention, that pumpkin could be upside down. So if the leaf was going this way, now the pumpkin's upside down and it looks kind of weird. So if you have fabric that you're using, you want to make sure that you've got it.
like this fabric, come on, this fabric, it doesn't really matter. That leaf is going that way, that's going that way, that's going that way. There's leaves going in all directions. So it didn't matter which way I, I put this on. I can't believe it's almost, we only have an hour and a half left. And I haven't even finished cutting yet. Now, it seems to me, like I said, when I mentioned earlier, October's pillow of the month, pillow cover of the month, I think it went the same way, where there was just a bunch of stuff at the beginning. And I mean, there's not a bunch of applique. There's only the, the, the five leaves. So that's good because I'm very slow at applique. My blanket stitch takes me forever. So when we get to that, that we know is going to take a long time. You know what I should do? I should see if Facebook is working yet. Let's see here. Uh, where is Facebook on here? There it is. Oh, am I lo I'm as logged in. Okay. Home, home, hmm, maybe not. This phone is really slow though, so I guess I shouldn't say that. Let it sit while I cut and see if it loads. Because it's been a few hours and I can't imagine Facebook being down for a few hours. But it kept saying that Facebook wasn't available and I wasn't connected to the internet. And I was able to do other things like Pinterest and I went out to furls and got a crochet pattern. So everything else was working just fine and dandy. So I know it wasn't that I didn't have a signal. Well, maybe they banned me from Facebook. Nah, because I was using both accounts. I have both my personal account and then I have my account for Carol Crafty Grandma. And neither of the accounts were working, so. Guess they didn't ban me from Facebook. Unless they figured out that both people were me. <laughs> All right, when I drew this, I drew it at a point, so not even a bother to try and curve it. So again, here we go. Doesn't matter which direction this fabric is facing because these leaves are in all different directions. So that's good. And then this is also gonna go on that fabric. And now the orange. No, nope, it's saying stories couldn't load. All right. Emails working, so I'm connected to the internet. What's that? Is that from Saturday? Yes, that was from Saturday. Okay. I just don't know. I just don't know.
We're getting there. Whoops! I'm not going down there to try and get it right now. I will pick it up later. So this is the last one that's going to go on the uh, leaf side. I get, and I guess it didn't matter which way I went with this one because I didn't actually get the fire truck, really. I could barely see it. Wouldn't even know that it was a fire truck. It just looks more like a car. But this is where that mirror image thing comes in. So this is why I had to flip because one's going to be like sticking out that way. So they're going to be fit. They have different directions to them. Both of these that are going on the pumpkin face the same direction. So this green leaf is going to hang on the pumpkin. Let's see, how did I do? Not too bad. 
Nope, this way. Got a turkey on it. There's a turkey and a finger. Down in a finger. Oh, over here. There we go. Turkey and a finger. Not that one. That one. This one. There it is. So when you're a kid, you put your hand down on a plate. You made a turkey. It's almost like the turkey's there. All right. So that's going to go on the pumpkin. Let's put that one over there. And this is the one I forgot to pay attention to because I wasn't thinking. Oh my gosh, they have directions to the fabric. Let's see how poorly I did. I know better than to ignore that, but for whatever reason, I just wasn't paying attention. Let's see, how badly did I do? Let's hang it up. Well, that, which is the primary, oops, over here. That, which is pretty much the primary pumpkin, is upside down. There's another one up here. That's right side up. And the little one's right side up. So maybe, yeah, maybe it won't look too bad. All right, acorn bottoms. And similar thing here. When it comes to a point down there, I kind of want to come in both directions, but then that means that I'm cutting on the wrong side of the line to my vision, for my vision, but it does make me happier to get that point nice and sharp. That doesn't look too bad, actually. Acorn bottom number two. 
Acorn bottom number three. Time for some water. Alright. Acorn tops. Let's see, there's one. That's kind of cute. Number two. number three and then these are going to be on this fabric so nice turkey right in the middle of the thing he's going to be covered up by an acorn so it doesn't really matter We go. Oh, put that back there, so you have a better shot. Clean up my mess. There we go. All right, let's see where we're going next. Remember, I'm missing a letter up here somewhere. I know I am. So we're going to find out which one I'm missing here as we go along. All right, let's get these out of the way. Because we just don't care. Coffee cup's going to need to be cleaned. Yeah, see? That's 
that's what's driving me crazy. The string cables. There we go. I was trying to get it to move back here. It just wasn't working. Okay. So I've prepared the appliques. We have now moved on to the completing the blocks portion of the activity. So referring to the falling leaves block diagram, arrange the gold, orange, and red leaf appliques on the X rectangle as shown when satisfied with the placement of the leaves fused in place. All right. I didn't set up the zoomed in camera today. No, I did not. All right. So we're going to do it this way. Here is Yeah, that's not going to work. I'm going to do it on the table. Cuz you can't see it. So here is our X fabric. And when I was cutting it, I was concerned because you can see these have the, it has trees in it. And I was concerned about it. If I had it going this way and I hung it up on the wall or put it in the quilt, now all my trees would be upside down. So you want to pay attention, again, to directional uh, fabric, especially when you get directional fabric. And gold is first. Orange is second, and red is third. I don't really like any of those fabrics on there now at all. You can barely tell that those fabric, oops, wrong way. I keep doing that today. Um, you can barely see those leaves on that fabric. Hmm. All right. Well, the orange goes down first, which is actually green in my case. And with this heat and bond, it does not stick. So it's a good thing that I couldn't use my design wall now that I think about it, because they wouldn't have stuck to the design to the fabric anyway. Okay, so this is the orange, and in their picture, and again, just like with everything else, you do not have to do what the book says. There's the book. So orange is on the bottom because the gold goes over the top of the orange a little bit. So the orange is going to be kind of angled off to the side that way. This is considered our gold. Come on. And this one this finger, now you can't see what I'm doing. Right, so this middle finger of the leaf goes over that way. Again, in their design. And then this one doesn't touch either of the other two. <laughs> Let's get the coffee cup out of the way. That caused a problem. That doesn't work. There we go. And then this last one just sort of hangs down 
off to the side. Now here's the one thing you always have to remember when doing applique. Make sure you have your quarter of an inch on all sides because we're still going to put this piece into a quilt. So you need to make sure that you have all the pieces right or far enough away from the edge so that they don't get caught up in the seam. Um, since I've set that, I like that. I'm going to move this over here very carefully. And now I'm going to use my heat to put them down permanently. With the heat and bond, it stays. Um, if you do not want to do applique or a blanket stitch, you don't have to with the heat and bond. It actually stays put once you put the heat on it. Um, with steam -a seam 2, it does not. It says on the packaging that you do not have to use um, sewing the blanket stitch. I can't remember how they term it. Um, they say that you don't have to, that it will stay stuck to whatever it is um, without a problem. That is not an accurate statement. Um, the steam seam too does not permanently adhere your applique fabric or your fabric to the other fabric, your applique on, whatever term you want to use. Um, it doesn't work. It, it puts it on there for a, a reasonable period of time, but I have had it come unstuck if I haven't put the blanket stitch on in a fairly reasonable period of time. Okay, so what do the directions say next? When satisfied with the placement of the least views in place, machine blanket stitch around the edges of each applique using matching threads. Okay, matching threads is a misnomer, in my opinion. Um, you can use whatever you want. My cotton thread. I have lots of cotton thread. Orange. That's probably a good idea. This bag ripped and is no good. We're done with that. There is a dark brown and there is an orange. I was going to go with the orange, but there's a lot of orange already in this fabric. So I'm going to go with the dark brown. And of course it doesn't have a bobbin. We can work that out. All right. Hey, sewing machine time. We haven't been at the sewing machine all day. Okay. I need a bobbin. don't want my quarter inch piecing foot on. I want my applique foot. So let's do that. I have the zigzag plate in, so that's good. Let's get piecing thread out of the way. This is a very dark brown. It's like a chocolate brown.
and I have a universal 70 needle in here, which is what I typically use for piecing. And I am going to leave, oops, and I'm going to leave it on because I see no reason not to. Um, it's a thinner needle than you typically use for applique. Typically, you're going to use the universal 80. Um, but I don't care that much about that small amount between the 80 and the 70. Okay, there's that. And you're like, why did you do that? You need to wind a bobbin. My machine has the ability. Well, this is my mother's machine. I'm borrowing it because my machine's still getting repaired. Um, but the machine has the ability to wind a bobbin well, still threaded through the needle. These pieces of metal here allow me to wind a bobbin. Now I turned my machine speed down a couple notches because you should never wind your bobbin at full speed. It could potentially warp the bobbin and it's just not fun because then you can't get the bobbin off. I think that's good enough. Um, something I could do is I can do, could do a different colored thread on each leaf if I wanted to. Um, I am not going to do that. I am going to use the same color thread all the way around. All right, stitch 19. That wasn't it. There we go. Um, my machine tells me when I should use stabilizer. And it is telling me at this point in time that I should be using stabilizer. It's also telling me to use a universal 80 needle, which I'm not. But, um, and I have discovered that it does pucker a bit as I stitch if I don't use stabilizer. But we're going to go for it anyway and not use the stabilizer. stiletto open and my seam ripper. I'm so lucky my kitty cats didn't knock everything off the table. Thank you. 
I did not stick this on very well because this is flipping up. And I know that the last time, last month, when I did the October, which was the first time I'd ever used heat and bond, I did not have that problem at all. So it must be something I did differently because I did not have that issue last time. probably just didn't hold it in place long enough. I am not very patient when it comes to standing with that iron and doing anything. I hate pressing seams. Just not a fan of standing there and waiting for the iron to do something. And I went too far because I was talking. That'll teach me. So I didn't start at the very tip of this where the point is. I started a little further down. Um, I prefer to do that so that when I start and stop, I'm not right at the tip. So I've just got a little ways to go. going to look at the back and make sure everything came out even and it did. And I think after I get my machine back I need to take this machine and get it serviced because it's being a little fussy itself. All right. Now remember this leaf only has one spot where it's covered up by another leaf. So I started at that spot. And now I'll go all the way around this one.
Now this is kind of hard to see because there's a green leaf or green tree and I'm using green fabric. So it's a little touchy here. My vision is going, uh, because the tree itself is a light green, but it's got some highlights in a darker green, which almost are almost identical to this fabric. I should have paid attention better when I was placing it. I didn't. bottom, not the top this time. All right. I just can't win. Well, maybe on the next leaf it'll cut both. All right, so again, this leaf is not connected to either of the leaves, so the applique is completely over it. it it's just, I just have to go all the way around it. So I'm gonna start kind of halfway down the first area here so that I'm not starting right at the tip. running into red matching. This leaf has a bunch of blue on it, so it stands out a little bit.
Okay. Three leaves. Let's see how they look. Hey, the third leaf did cut all three strings, or both strings. Okay. So we see here that we've done the applique on the first one, the second one, and the third one. And we turn it over, and we look at the leaves, and they all blend in. I messed that one up. So... I should have used a, a more solid fabric for the back because you really can't see the leaves at all. And even standing here looking, and I know they're there, so I can see the three leaves, but really they're, they don't stand out at all. Now, the, the trees themselves still work with the theme. So even if nobody ever notices that there are leaves on here, I, I'm okay because I think it's going to work. I'm going to look at something. Sorry. Just had that squirrel moment. That's what that is. Okay. So let's see. So falling leaves. I've completed that block. That's done. The next block is the turkey. Sorry. I felt like there was something on my foot when there, I don't think there really was, but all right. I need Y. This is why. And I'm going to do it up here, even though I could do it down there on the table. If you don't have a design wall, use your table. It'll work just as well. I like being able to see things, so I'm putting it up here. There's our corn. Select pieces as follows. One each gold A. So I have two A. Or no, I just need one A. One A. And an orange A. Aha! That's where the orange A comes from. Cream dot B. Okay, so cream dot, we're using this fabric. So that's that one. D through F. And then D, D, E. A, B, C, D, E, F. F is, where is F? What does F look like? F is a little, there's F, okay. H, no G, H. I. K, J, K, 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 
Okay, is two by two and a half. One, two, three and a half. This is three and a half, so that's not right. Three and a half is L. Let's see, is this right? K is two and a half by two. Two and a half by two. This is K. There's someone at my house. I don't understand. Steve was talking to someone at the door. I don't know who it was. K and then L. M. N. And O and a cream dot P, which is this. Now let's see if we can put them all together. Let's see. Draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of each cream dot C. Those of them are supposed to be more than one. Yes, there are. F. So these ones I'm going to draw cars. lines on. One, two, I don't think I'm going to need three of them, but okay. D, E, F. G H I where's J? J is this is J. And M. That must be M. Okay. I am using my Frixon pen now. And most of these are tiny, so I will use a tiny square. Let's see. C is A, B, C. Two three inch squares. That's what these are. Yes. All right. On the ruler. There we go. On the ruler, there is a 45 degree angle line. And you want to take your fabric and line up. 45 degree angle on one edge of the fabric and then naturally this ruler is not big enough for this particular piece of fabric it is for all the, the other rest of them but just for that not for that one okay so 45 degree angle that one. Now let's 
switch to the smaller ruler. What did I do with it? It's on the book. Is how many of these tiny ones am I supposed to have? Two J squares. Okay, so that one looks correct. This one is off. Mm, rotary cutter. Or use the good one. It was wider than it was supposed to be. Okay, J. There we go. And now, pair an A and C square. So we're going to take the fabric right side up and match it up to a C square that has a line on it. Right sides together and so Repeat to make two more AC units. Do I have a third? I don't. Okay. Of the I rectangle. I. This is I. And I'm supposed to be using both J squares. All right. I wasn't, didn't mark them all. Okay. It's not the 45, that's the 30, 60. That's what's wrong. I'm like, it's not going corner to corner. Okay. So that's going to go there. So I have these two. And I'm going to sew on either side of the line on both of those. I have this one. I'm going to sew on the line. So the K rectangle, okay, so we got to slow down. Trying to, I'm trying to go too fast. All right, let's go here and sew on either side of the line. So we need to get rid of our applique thread. I'm not going to bag it up or anything like that because we're probably still going to use it. 
I mean, the dark green's over here too, so I guess I will. I've got my hunter green. I'm sure we'll use that at some point. I've got black, I've got blue. The orange was over in the other area. I'll have to see about using the orange later on. I'm not certain. But piecing thread. Just an FYI, when I opened this, I ended up cutting some of the thread. So we're going to have to see when we get to the thread that's been cut. It may happen while we're sewing today. It may happen three weeks from now. I don't think it's that far down, but you never can tell. This is really thin thread. It's a 60 weight thread. Um, so it is very thin thread, but we'll see how far I go before I run into the area that I cut. All right, get off the applique's foot, regular quarter inch foot. Tell the machine I'm stitching a normal seam and then drop my stitch length down to 1.5. Make sure my squares are square. And I have more scissors coming because I've misplaced all my clipping scissors. Where are, where are my regular scissors? I know they were here. I used them to cut the fat. Oh, there they are. Okay, got some starter fabric. Okay, so now I want to stitch just off of the line. So I'm going to run my quarter inch piecing foot, the toe, along the line that I draw, drew. And I'm going to do it on this piece also. To do the exact same thing and going the other way. Over here. And it says, I don't know why it says I need three, but it's wrong. Two more AC units. There are not. Okay. I'm confused, but I'll live with it. Um, OK. 
go. Now we're going to cut down the middle or down the line or a quarter inch from the seam, whichever way you want to go. And then we're going to do that again. And now we press. So now we're going to press these and it doesn't really matter from what I can tell. So we're going to press these to the darker fabric. headbands drive me crazy but I the hair my hair keeps falling in my eyes so I have to do something There's one. And they don't say to sew anything together. No, just do that. All right. Alright, so now I need to trim these down to two and a half inches by two and a half inches. And it makes certain to point out the fact that you need to keep the seam line centered corner to corner. So here we go. Oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Let's get the bigger one out of the way. So again, using the 45 degree angle on, nope, let's go this way, there we go, back a little bit, 
using the 45 degree line on the ruler. You want to make sure it's two and a half inches square. And this piece is actually two, it's got an eighth of an inch too long there and about an eighth of an inch too long there. You do not want to just trim everything, line it up on one side to two and a half inches and I mean you can. As long as you keep that 45 degree line straight. You can cut it however you want. So we're cutting it to two and a half inches, trimming that side. And I'm going to go this way, and now I'm going to use the other 45. Make sure I'm t lined up at two and a half, and make sure that 45 is right down the middle. And last but not least, we're going to cut off this ear. So we're going to measure two and a half, two and a half. Keep that line down the seam. Cut off the ear. And now we have a perfect two and a half inch square, half square, half square triangle. That, yeah, something like that. And if you want to trim it just a little bit at a time, you can do that. If you want to do the two and a half, that's fine. As long as you keep your ruler, the 45 degree line, down the middle. You have to make sure of that, otherwise your square will look off kilter. It won't be, it won't look right. It won't be symmetrical. There we go. That's the word I want it to use. And this is another one of those places where using the smallest ruler possible is best because you have the most control over it. I'm not going to do the full two and a half right now because this one's a little off, just a little off. So I'm going to trim it and then trim it here. trim both of these sides also to get it exactly to two and a half. Because it just wasn't lined, it wasn't square, it was lining up odd, so the center, and that's why you you have to keep the 45 straight no matter what. And then you may have to trim all four sides get it to two and a half inches square. It just depends on how it was sewn and that can, there's many factors that go into that. Someone happens to walk into the room while you're sewing, it can throw off what you're doing. I think the phone rang, which makes my watch vibrate. That could have happened. And now we'll get it down to two and a half. I know that it's square. Mm. 
Nope, that's not two and a half. That's what my problem was. I was trying to cut it an eighth of an inch too big. Hey, big girl. Okay. Hey, big girl. What's going on? Nice week. Okay. So, back to that view. And these are considered gold, and these are considered orange. So, I need here a gold. Gold on top, white. Yep. Here, an orange. And then this one's gold. It goes this way. And this is an orange, and it goes there. Okay. D. That's this piece. It's going to go in the middle. Like that. O, which is a long piece, is going to go over here. This is a B. It has a bit of a wrinkle in it. Let's iron that a little bit. Flatten it out. Nope, that didn't work. It's okay. I'm not going to spray you. All right, and this goes in here. Let's see. N. This goes along there. G. What was G? What size was G, I should say? Three, two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. One, two, three, four and a half. One, two and a half. No, nope, that's not it. These are K's. I only needed one K. Why do I have three? Two and a half. Oh, two and a half by four and a half. Two and a half by four. Yeah, those are K's. Okay. Two and a half by four and a half. That's. These are G's. All right, G. G goes here. One of them goes here because it gets an H on it, which I'm not certain which one is H. And then G goes here. P. That's P. Q. Q. One inch. By two and a half. Yep. There. Um, I'm going to 
to sew this. So here, let's go this way. Ah. So this one, we drew the, tri the lines on the squares. And we're going to sew it in either corner. But this time, we're going to sew on the line. We're not going to sew next to the line. We're going to sew on the line. one corner, second corner. This is going to be the turkey's head. our ruler just like before quarter of an inch from the stitch line cut off the triangles and now we're going to press to the dark fabric, which in this case is the big square, or the big rectangle, I should say. One, and then we'll get the other corner. Now, a little bit of starch. Ooh, that's way too much. That was way too much. All right, let's see. And this is going to be the turkey's head. Take it and we put it, where do we put it? Put it next to here. Okay, that's his head. 
Now, I need... M. What was M? M was the... I think M was the gold. Let's see. Yes, gold. One inch square. Got it. Oops, here. There we go. All right. So gold, one inch square, and an L, one and a half by three and a half. One and a half, one, two, three and by three and a half. All right. And we put this down in the bottom. And then we go to the sewing machine. Oops, not that one, that one. And on this one, we also sew on the drawn line. Oh. oh. And if you're wondering why I use that fabric, it's that way when I start sewing, I am I can sew all the way across the fabric. You know, because normally when you start sewing, you're going to start sewing a little bit in. Then you're not going to have all of your seam sewn. This way, when I put my fabric underneath, I'm going to have all of that seam sewn. did that. There we go. All right. So now we trim off the starter fabric and the tail. And we do a quarter of an inch. And this time, I am still going to, even though it's the light fabric, I am still going to press towards the bigger piece, just because this piece is so small that pressing towards it would be challenging. There we go. Little bit, little bit, little bit. There we go. Little bit. That last one I got way too much stabilizer on. Okay, and this piece looks like that and goes next to that is the beak of our bird. All right, K is what size? Two by two and a half. That's what this is, right? Two and a half by two. Yes. All right, so it goes up here. All right, let's see. I still have these two. E and Whatever this one is. <laughs> F. 
There it is. So now these are the same distance. How did I? I uh, here. Sorry. So this is E, this is F, and again we're going to sew on the drawn line. sure everything is totally squared up. And again, now we're going to go we're still going to go to the big piece. We're going to press towards press towards the big piece. That time I actually got a small amount of starch. All right, and this goes right here. And then the last piece to put together is uh, this G. Okay. Over to the machine. And again, sewing on the line. You go there, okay, and we're still going to press towards the big piece even though it's the light color. And now of course this piece turned out to be more blue. It is the, the part that hangs down from the turkey. And you'd think I'd know what it's called because I have one of them, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, all right. And 
There we go. All right. Our turkey is not put together, but our turkey is now pieced. Um, so when we start next time, part two, we will put our turkey together and then the next step is to do the acorns and the pumpkins and move our way on. But the very first thing we'll do in part two is we're going to put the turkey together and get him all pieced up and set right next to the, yeah, he goes right next to here. So he's the second part. And I will see you all next time. Have a great time. And we'll see you again. Uh, again, um, thumbs up. Subscribe, follow, whatever you do. Don't